Mabuhay ka, Pilipino. Mabuhay, kapisanan, kasaysayan, Pilipinas. Nako, welcome. Ako po si Xiao Chu, isang public historian. Welcome to Vibal Group, kasaysayan, kaysaya. Ayan. Alam nyo, special po yung panauhin natin na topic natin. Eh, hindi ako masyadong babate, no? Pero uh, yung mga early bird natin, eh, gusto ko lang batiin muna. O bago yung lahat, nagpapasalamat tayo kay Sandra Tea Omar. sa kanyang paglilingkod sa ating uh, um, show no pero siya po ay ano i- 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 dadali na sa ibang uh, uh, programa so ang kasama ho natin na bago ngayon ay si uh, B- si Ma'am Maya Makunanan Gubalya ayan Maya Makunanan Gubalya maraming salamat ha at salamat sa iyong pagtulong sa atin sa unang pagkakataon ngayong gabi para sa Vibal Group kasaysayan kay saya Napanood nyo po kanina ang isang clip ng pinakapaborito kong moment sa kasaysayan ng ating bansa. 
sa aking palagay, yan po ang pinakarurok no, ng ating uh, kasaysayan. Liban ho sa People Power Revolution at sa uh, Philippine Revolution. Ito yung pag-celebrate natin ng 100 years bilang isang bansa. Kung saan napaka, bagamat maraming krisis na nangyayari, eh napaka-positibo po ng ating pananaw at nagkaisa po tayo sa pagdiriwang ng uh, birthday ng ating bansa. At yan po yung pinangunahan, walang iba po, no? ng ating dating Pangulong Fidel Valdez Ramos. Kaya sot-sot ko itong uh, uh, Philippine Centennial, nabili ko ho yan nung high school ako, at ito po yung napirmahan din eventually ng Pangulong Fidel Valdez Ramos. Kaya natin ito, ha? kaya natin ito. So, eh yeah, topic natin ngayon, of course, meron pong pinakaunang presidential library online sa Pilipinas uh, ang na-launch recently at uh, ito po yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon, the FBR Legacy. No? So, pupunta na po tayo sa ating guest matapos lamang ilang sandali, uh, may paalala lamang po tayo mula sa Vibal at agad po tayong uh, dederecho sa ating uh, discussion. Bertong kunat! Daryong Dagol! Ano tong balita pinagkakalat mo dito sa balwarte ko, ha? Anong balita? Huwag ka na magmakamangam pa! Ayun ba? Ha? Hindi ba totoo naman? Nasabi ang lunas sa COVID. Alam mo ba ako nasa naman kang mayaw? Nasaan na ga talaga yun? At higit sa lahat, fake news talaga yung ads sa revolution. Ungas ka ba? Hmm. Ano ba po yung nagsasabi mo? Saan mo pinagkukuha yan? Huh. Siyempre, nag-research ako no, sa Tuk Tuk University. Ah, palibasok kasi at umugot ka na laos kaya hindi mo alam yun. Ano ha? Lord naman! Magpaulad ka naman ng katalinuan! Reliable source of information, sari-saring content na isinulat ng mga eksperto, mga librong di kalidad na abot hanggang sa Tuesday, tumawag ka lang sa akin. By the way, hindi ako si Lord. Ako si Vibal. O pre, tingnan mo to. Di ba sabi ko sa iyo totoong Edsa Revolution? Ah, oo nga no. O tapos ito. Wala pala talaga sa naga ang bulkang mayon. Sabi ko sa iyo eh. Ito ang kalibutan. Kaya natin yan. Kung tayo ay nagsasama-sama, kung tayo ay nagtutulong-tulungan, kung tayo ay nagkakabit-bisig, kung tayo ay nagkakaisa. Ako si Fidel Valdez Ramos ay mataimtim na nanunumpa na tutuparin ko ay mataimtim na nanunumpa na tutuparin ko ng buong katapatan at sigasig ng buong katapatan at sigasig ang aking mga tungkulin ang aking mga tungkulin Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Pangangalagaan at ipagtatanggol ang kanyang konstitusyon. Ipatutupad ang mga batas nito. Ipatutupad ang mga batas nito. Magiging makatarungan sa bawat tao. Magiging makatarungan sa bawat tao. At itatalaga ang aking sarili. At itatalaga ang aking sarili. Sa paglilingkod sa bansa. Sa paglilingkod sa bansa. Kasihan nawa ako ng Diyos. Kasihan nawa ako ng Diyos. This work of empowering the people, not only in their political rights, but also in their economic opportunities, I dedicate my presidency. Buhay ang sambayan ng Pilipino 
Mabuhay ang Republika ng Pilipinas! Ayan mga kaibigan, pinakikilala po natin ang ating Pangulong Fidel B. Ramos. Sa lalo na sa mga taong hindi nakaabot sa kanyang panahon. Ano? At uh, nagpapasalamat tayo Ma'am Celeste D. Makulangan for making this uh, episode possible from the RPDEV, no? yung pong foundation ng ating Pangulong Ramos. Ano? Uh, Lionel Casimiro II, Alexis Sancheta Amaro, Jeric Simpanlikan, Uh, good evening, uh, Maris Masilungan from Pag-aalay Pag-asa CFI Mandaluyong. No? So tutuloy na po tayo no, sa ating uh, talakayan. Uh, alam nyo po, ako po ay natutuwa at nararangal na pumayag po siya na siya po ay, uh, uh, maki, uh, siya po ay uh, makipag-usap sa atin ngayong gabi ito. Napaka-importante po ng oras ng taong ito. No? Kaya talagang uh, sisimulan na po natin. Siya po ang dating secretary of finance ng ating Pangulong Fidel B. Ramos at siya rin po yung chairman ng uh, the, the, the FBR Legacy Initiative. Atin po tinatawagan, wala pong iba, kundi si Dr. Roberto F. De Ocampo, OBE. Makasaysayang gabi po, uh, Dr. Bobby. Magandang gabi sa iyo, Rashaw. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this program. Thank you sir. Tulad ng nasabi ko sa inyo, I'm a great fan of yours noong uh, nagkita ho tayo sa actually sa buhol ni President Ramos no at doon po sa ating launch ng kanyang birthday uh, nitong nakaraan ng ating FBR Legacy website. And syempre, of course medyo medyo sorry sir, ibabanggitin ko lang ito. Yung OBE po, siya po yung uh, siya po ay isang officer of the British Empire na tinatawag ko natin. Uh, this guy uh, was decorated by Queen Elizabeth II. At uh, hindi ko lang alam, uh, siyempre, uh, magkakaroon ngayon ng coronation sa Saturday kay uh, King Charles III. Okay, so ano siya, officer siya noon. And I think even Fidel Ramos, sir, was decorated by the Queen, ano? I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he was the first Philippine president to be given a state visit in Buckingham Palace by uh, Queen Elizabeth. Yes, tama. At, at Nandun din ako noon eh. Nandun yeah. din ako, kasama ko siya. Yes, and, and talaga naman, ano na, so, ano to, extraordinary. Of course, kayo rin ay, uh, kayo rin ang, uh, I think, chairman of the Philippine Veterans Bank today, yes. Mm. Yes. Opo. So, ito na lang ha. Before we go to the FBI legacy, we want to know you a little bit more and we have a favorite question here in this program, no? Uh, which we which was inspired by Winston Churchill. What was your earliest memory of childhood? Earliest memory of childhood? Yeah. <laughs> was uh, living in a very you might say a poor section of town near Santa Mesa. Wow. Because this was just after peace was restored and after World War II. Uh, nandun ako kasama mga parents ko, pero lahat kami na isang, nasa isang bahay kasama ng mga tia, mga tiyo, sa kalye trabaho. Wow. Kalye wow. trabaho along Santa Mesa Boulevard. Wow, parang inspiring no? from humble beginnings. And of course, you also came from uh, uh, a family na, na lumaban nung panahon ng Japanese. No? Si, oh, mga veterans. Right, right. Si Imaning de Ocampo po ay, I think, uncle ninyo. Uncle ko yun. No? Yes. Leader siya ng uh, mga veterano. Uh, Hunters Group. Yes. Ayan. So, punta na natin itong uh, FBR, the FBR Legacy, the first online presidential library in the Philippines. No? Now, ang presidential library sa mga kababayan natin, very important part ito sa US. No? Part ito ng National Archives, may presidential library system sila na kinokolate yung mga, yung mga ano, no? kinokolate ng mga dating presidente yung kanilang mm -hmm. papers. And then they will build the, the, the library privately but the state will take care of it will take over and will will uh, ano yung mga files ano but uh, ito pong ginawa ninyo website well, mas accessible 
to our people, kahit nasaan sila. Can you tell us a bit about the genesis of the project? And what were the basic, basic things you wanted to be in that website as head of this initiative? Well, actually, this idea came uh, even before President Ramos was still alive. Because right after his presidency, Tina Union Kinatog Nating RP Dev or the Ramos Peace and Development Foundation. Right. But uh, as uh, he was getting older, he continued to keep writing. Siguro walang ibang presidente na nagsulat ng napakadaming right. speeches and books. Halos uh, taon may book launching. You know? But he also uh, wanted to, but, but he was also very te techy, ang tawag nila. No? May pagka-techy si FBR. Even before being techy, he was fashionable. Right. In fact, nung nagtartabaho pa kami dyan sa Malacanang, uh, ang ginawa niya para madaling makita mga files, dokumento, mga desisyon, ginawa niya ang kwan. Naglagay siya ng barcoding system sa bawat dokumento ng palasyo. Kaya kung meron kang hahanapin na nagdesisyonan o kaya kahanap ka ng dokumento, ay hindi yung hahalungkat ka ng mga filing cabinet na kadami-dami bago mo makita kasi naka-barcode siya. So, he was already in this uh, frame of mind at ngayon, of embracing... Hanggang ngayon, sir, hanggang ngayon, oh, sir of, ganyan sa palasyo, naka-barcode ang mga sulat. Oh, pero, pero siya nagsimula nun. No? Wow. And uh, alam mo, um, even, even while he was inside his car, huh, right. mayroong portable na fax doon at uh, mayroon siyang uh, means of communication. He was very very much attuned to using technology. So, siguro naisip niya uh, that uh, as part of his legacy, in order that all his papers, decisions, the presidential history can be stored, it might not be a bad idea to do it also in a technological manner. Right. Pero of course, hindi niya nasimulan yun. At uh, kami na ang uh, nagsimula nun. Uh, shortly after he passed away. And we thought, instead of building uh, isang, isang building mismo mm. na napakamahal, napakalaki, tapos uh, mahirap, ma mahirap ako ng pondo, na bakit hindi na lang natin gawin na ilagay natin sa internet you know, to be accessible to as many people as possible uh, and to be permanent, kasi building, baka masunog pa yan, ano? A right. piece internet will always be there. It will be accessible and uh, it will be permanent. Kaya yun ang naisip namin. And lalo na ngayon, na napakauso ang social media, it's easier, it's better to be able to put this in cyberspace so right. that the whole world who's interested in learning something about the president himself or about his administration can easily access it through the internet. Kaya yan ang naging project namin. And of course, we had to raise funds for it. But many people supported uh, because nga, uh, it was a very uh, memorable presidency. Uh, president Ramos did so many things that many of uh, generations to come can learn and he is probably the most internationally respected president of the philippines he was a leader among leaders and um, even people around the world would be more than eager to find out about president ramos and his presidency wow uh, pag nakita nyo kahit dito sa mga video clip na binigay sa atin ng happy dev talagang Kahit nasa sasakyan, very workaholic, and just imagine the voluminous numbers of uh, uh, documents of speeches that were uh, uh, recorded by this presidency. And by the way, you're talking about yung mga tumulong sa inyo. Uh, sa pagkakaalam ko, ho, ay, uh, isa sa mga tumulong din sa atin ay yung uh, San Miguel Corporation ba? San Miguel, Ayala. Ayala, yes. <laughs> Tami sila. Yeah, San Miguel Corporation, Ayala Corporation were the first two companies 
to commit their full support. But as you said, ano, uh, earlier, ang dami hong uh, files, no? uh, sabi dito sa press release natin from RPDEV, there were 16,000 videotapes. Uh, over 10,000 documents contained in 100 steel filing right. cabinets and a little over 21,000 presidential photos. So, sir... Uh, and we haven't, uh, we haven't put all of it in yet, huh? We yes. have to select the ones that we could put in that were the highlights and uh, so that we can at least um, let the public know that there is such a website and we will continue to put in more documentation as uh, as we as we go along so it's a work in progress ano uh, in fact may mga links pa na uh, tingin, uh, may mga documents na pero sa palagay ko napakarami pa ang ilalagay lalo na do sa mga state visits sa photographs and and all of that ano but it is that what is there is fantastic sir i have to commend you no kasi Pag tinignan niyo ho yung website na iyon, kahit ngayon siguro no, tingnan natin yung uh, yung website ano. Pag tinignan niyo yung website ngayon uh, para ma-demonstrate natin yung kagandahan ng website. Yung archival collection ang very interested ako dito. So you have documents but the photographs are fantastic no. Um especially yung mga photographs and you will see these are never before published photos no from the collection of uh, the RPDEV and you will see ito yung military career halimbawa this is these, these are rarely seen photos no? of fbr in his various visitations no? in the provinces during his time as commander of the pc no ito may papakita pa ako sa inyo dito itong isa no? so yan yeah, no? the si charming president uh, Pre general ramos no charming the young people as he always do di ba Ah, uh, and siyempre yung uh, pinakita ko ang interesting dito eh yung si ayan ano, si Immortal kasama na niyo dito bago ang end sa revolution nito ha. <laughs> bago ang martial law, si Juan Ponce Enrile at si Fidel Ramos together no as uh, a soldier. So, uh, ano yan uh, uh, never before seen. Ang ganda no sinabi ni Ma'am Marian Pastoroses no uh, sa isang panayam ko sa kanya when he said that uh, ang isang napansin niya Ang very core talaga ng personal ng ano no nung, nung buhay ni President Ramos as he saw himself as a soldier and an engineer. Oh, a soldier and an engineer kasi yun ang kanyang career nung siya ay bata pa. Now, the question ko po sa inyo, uh, how did you know him? Paano kayo nagkakilala ni Sir Eddie Ramos? Well, first of all, um, it, it it seems he knew my uncle and he knew my father. And then when uh, when uh, the EDSA revolution came around, I was asked to come back to the Philippines. I was requested. I was at the World Bank at that time. Wow. And then uh, President Cory eventually appointed me to be chairman of uh, DBP. Mm -hmm. so, so in that capacity, I would interact with uh, members of the cabinet that included President Ramos. And I was sometimes, uh, at the time, he was Secretary of Defense, and I was sometimes asked to give economic briefings. So when uh, President Ramos decided to run for president, he tapped me to be his main economic wow. advisor, as well as his uh, main speechwriter during the campaign for the parts that had to do with the economy. And the two of us were, the, were, were, were usually discussing what kind of an economic program the Ramos administration should have, uh, anong mga prioridad, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually, nung, uh, nung nanalo siya, he, he, asked, he uh, asked me to uh, be the Secretary of Finance. Oh, wow. So, talagang casual lang yung pagkakakilala sa inyo, but he trusted you and then put you in his economic team even during the campaign. And uh, of course, well, I have to say this, ano? Uh, there was a power crisis at that time when you assumed office. Uh, I think the GOCCs, Oriente, Telepono, Tubig, napakasama ng servicio, sir. No? Uh, I was already alive at that time. There were so many brownouts. No? Um, and of course, this hampers the growth of the economy. No? So looking at that situation, sir, uh, uh, what was ano, no? Uh, kumusta ho? Uh, 
paano nyo step by step no na you try to resolve all of these things and and yes, of course yes. there's a model that from Britain na actually si General Almonte also put in yung yung uh, Thatcherism they the, the regulate the yes. the industry so so paano po ito nagsimula sir uh, as you as you mentioned no after the EDSA revolution the Korean administration focused on the restoration of democracy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the economy was struggling because the uh, country was in deep debt. The infrastructure had not been uh, attended to. So may mga brownouts, et cetera, et cetera. So Ram President Ramos focused quite a lot of attention on the economy because he felt that democracy among people that are hungry and unemployed is right. not going to succeed. Right. You have to make sure that the people are, are not jobless. And the only way to do that is to spark the economy to provide job opportunities. Right. Ngayon, kung meron kang brown nut, walang, walang mag invest dito <laughs> sa Pilipinas. Wow. Mahirap mag gumawa ng business. And kung, kung walang gumagawa ng investment, wala rin makakaroon ng jobs. So he had to pay attention to the priority of bringing back necessary infrastructure first to be able to have tools for the business to business community to work with. And second, so that it will be convincing to the international business community that the Philippines and Sabinga was back in business. And the problem along ng panahong yon, Alam mo, pag magpapatayo ka ng infrastructure, lalo na power plants, ito napakamahal. No? A bilyon-bilyon yan. E walang pera ang Pilipinas. Baon pa sa utang, papano tayo niyan. So we ended up coming up with a program that is a landmark, landmark program right. that was then known as the BOT law. BOT, yeah. Meaning Build, build operate, operate, Transfer. Operate and Transfer. And the idea was to involve the private sector as a co-investor with the government, even in infrastructure projects. Uh, prior to right. that, lot of infrastructure uh, ang gastos gobyerno, no, out of your taxes. Right. Pero wala, wala, hindi, hindi uh, kulang ang ating pondo noon. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, napakadaming corruption uh, sa, sa mga government-run entities. At least sa privadong sektor, pag merong korap, pwede patarsikin ng mga dalian, di ba? Right. You're fired, alagot ba? So, we introduced the BOT and as a result, many companies, both here and abroad, invested in power projects. And mm -hmm. even before the first half of the Ramos administration, medyo nawawala na ang ating uh, brownout system. And aside from that, uh, our BOT became the worldwide model for bringing in private sector into infrastructure financing. Naging cover boy pa nga ang Pilipinas sa ilan-ilang magazine there, that was showing us as the model for other countries that might be similarly situated. Meaning, right. kailangan nila ng infrastructure, kulang ang kanilang pondo, dapat siguro ipasok nila pri privatong sector. And that's uh, and that up to now is the model. Kaya maririnig mo sa mga sumunod na administration, they started calling it PPP, di ba? Yes. Public-Private Partnership. Pero ang, ang simula niyan ay uh, during the Ramos administration as the BOT law. Ginagamit right. pa ngayon. Uh, bawat administration ginagamit yan. And these are the sort of things that you will read no? Yes. Without commentary, ah. without commentary, pero of course the selection was carefully placed there to give uh, facts about uh, the, the Ramos projects and so that the people, is in, the people who view the website are empowered to of actually uh, interpret this data. Right. The, the website is not intended to give a political slant or to be able to just uh, praise the uh, President Ramos all over the place, but to give a factual account of what took place so that those that want to find out exactly 
what uh, what important decisions, what important projects, what important uh, pieces of legislation, and how it came about that those decisions were made can derive this from the legacy website. Ayan. Saka, very, ano, very credible ang pagkakasulat with also citing sources po yan. Ano, at uh, may mga data pong pinapakita. Tsaka hindi kayo mahihirapan. Kasi yung pag masyado din pong napakarami ng data na nakalagay na hindi ho inayos, na parang sabog, eh hindi rin ho maiintindihan ng bayan. Pero kung ganito, Ama. pakaganda ng pagkakasentasyon at uh, may, hindi, maha, hindi maikli, pero hindi rin napakahaba. Uh, napaka ano to, makakatulong ko ito. And ito nga, ang target to natin dito, especially the young, ki the young kids, yung mga nagpa-project po sa skwelahan. Gamitin nyo po ang website na ito. Ang daming pictures. Lagay nyo sa mga PowerPoint presentations nyo. Ano, basta hindi nyo. Oh, kung gagawa sila ng research or term paper yes. o ganyan. No? Right. Madali. See, we, we were able to assemble a team right. with different Opo. expertise, no? Some of them are very good at uh, archiving. Others were very good at putting up websites and so forth and so on. Kaya mga professional ang, ang nakagawa ng uh, organization of the website the way you have described it. Yun. Sir, ano po, no? we're talking about yung kung paano, you know, the president invited the, pub, the private sector to help government, help the people. And of course, maraming controversies siya na yung isang tito ko nga galit na galit kay Ramos kasi sa MWS siya noon and he have to resign kasi nag-retrench ka because that did not privatize. But what was the effect of the privatization na dati ang gobyerno siyang nagtatrabaho sa siya ang gumagawa ng serbisyo sa telepono, sa tubig, sa lahat ng namamahala dyan. Pero ang nangyari ho, eh, parang nawala yung burden noon at, napun, at ano, no, private sector na yung gumawa. Gumanda ho ang serbisyo sa palagay nyo. Alam mo siya, oh, hindi lang electricity ang nakinabang, yeah. ano? Mm. Uh, nabanggit mo yung water supply. Meron tayong tinatawag na systems loss. Ha? Ibig mm. sabihin, pumapasok yung tubig sa pipes papuntang bahay, pero habang pumupunta ron, nawawala ang napakadaming, uh, nap napakadaming quantity ng tubig mm. at yung iba nananakaw pa. Kasi may so, butas. Hindi, na, hindi so, nalalagay example, yung butas. <laughs> For example, kung 100% ang uh, nilagay mo towards uh, the, the households, eh 50% lang lumalabas. Kaya nung panahong yun, babayad ka ng babayad, pero sa karamihan, lalo ng mga mahirap, pag, uh, pag bukas nila ng gripo, wala naman lumalabas na tubig, yung iba tuloy, lilinya pa sa isang uh, public uh, standpipe or artesian well. Eh sabi namin, siguro mas mabuti pa na ipasok natin ang pribadong sektor. At ano, ano nangyari? Abe, parang ngayon, ang lakas ng, ng water pressure, ang baba ng systems loss, very dependable, pa, pati yung mga mas uh, mahihirap sa atin, nakakaroon ng water supply. Ngayon, ano pa? E yung telephone system. Aya. Nung panahon ni President Ramos, di ba, medyo nabatikos pa tayo ni... <coughs> ni uh, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. Nagbisita dito tapos nagbigay ng talumpat. Sa harapan ni President Ramos, sinabi niya sa problema dito sa Pilipinas, yung telephone system. Pag nag-dial ka, hindi mo lang kung busy signal o, 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 o wala. Kung humingi ka ng, pag nag-apply ka for telephone, abutin ka ng taon-taon, etc. No? May party what, line what, <laughs> what did we introduce? What did President Ramos introduce? Well, the mobile telephone system. Right. And, and as a result, we became practically uh, one of the world's leaders mm. in mobile telephony. In fact, on reputation of Philippine, Philippines, is, there is more um, uh, text messaging in the Philippines than in the United States and Europe combined. Huh? Right. Uh, because uh, we, we, we went into it. Uh, through uh, through the efforts of President Ramos. And now, wala ka nang mag mag magagawang reklamo tungkol sa telepono. Eh, maski sino mo, may cellphone at nakakatawag, maski sa kaninong kamag-anak, right. um, even, even if the kamag-anak is abroad. 
So and it is yeah, now free. <laughs> so you can see that all this happened during an administration which became the foundation of the restoration of the Philippine economy for all the administrations that followed it. Right, right. And sir, if, ano yun, ang ganda ng ang ganda na hindi tayo masyadong nare-remind that President Ramos was an engineer. No? engineer yes, he was, say, not, he was mm-hmm. not a politician, you know. In mm-hmm. fact, when he was campaigning, medyo kinakaban pa kami na baka hindi, hindi siya marunong magbigay ng jokes o you know, mano, I, yung mga... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yung mga gusto ng mga tao na kailangan may pagka-movie star ka, sasayo-sayo ka sa entablado and stuff like that. He was not a politician but he was a very experienced administrator. Okay? Yeah. Aside from being an engineer. Alam mo, importante maging administrator kasi po magpapatakbo ka ng isang malaking institusyon na napakadaming tao katulad ng Armed Forces of the Philippines ba hindi pwedeng hindi ka marunong maging manager o kaya babaksak yung minamanage mo. Eh, right. Handa siya ron. Kaya nung pumasok nung naging president siya, he could manage a very large economy like Philippines. And a soldier who sought peace with very the enemies orderly. of the state. Ha? Ha? Oh, very with the orderly. Tsaka diba? gigising, gigi, mat, mat, sipag-sipag, gigising yun ang napakaaga. Kuminsan nga, tulog, medyo tulog pa ako. May ring yung telepono, mga 4.30 ng umaga. <laughs> Si President na yun, Nakalim, nabasa na niya lahat na clippings niya na for, to, for the newspaper of the day at magtatanong na ng question about na, 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 nabasa niya. So he was a person who was doing leadership by example. He worked so hard that all of us could not help but work almost as hard. It was, oh, yeah. so, hard to, it was <laughs> so hard to work as hard as him. Uh, sir, siguro uh, dahil nabanggit naman natin na yung ilan sa core achievements and by the way, there's a part of the uh, website mamaya ipapaliwanag natin pagka, pagka natapos tayo sa interview with Sir Bobby yung FBR uh, Oral History but, uh, Project which is in-interview po no? bago namatay pa si FBR, in-interview yung mga close associates ni FBR para ho, makilala natin sila ng gusto. The full interviews are now loaded at the YouTube of the FBR Legacy. So kung ano yan, buong istorya, pwede nyo makuha and you can use that again in your projects. And then there's a collection of videos, photographs, and all of this. But sir, uh, siguro yung isang question na gusto kong tanungin sa inyo. What do you think would be the most difficult uh, uh, time of FBR? Um, I would say there, at least for me, no, there would there would be three. Huh? Three, okay. <laughs> no, the first one was when we had a rice shortage. Okay, mm-hmm. alam mo, rice is a very delicate uh, political subject matter. <laughs> pag karon, pag nagkaroon ka na shortage, na ko bungta bungta bayan ne, eh, medyo and uh, he he managed to solve that quickly but unfortunately uh, he had to let go of his uh, then secretary of agriculture mm. i think the second one was the flor contemplation case yes yeah uh, and because of that he also had to uh, uh, let go of two very able cabinet members the labor secretary and the then foreign secretary Wow. But for me as an economist and finance secretary, the most difficult one of these would be the Asian financial crisis. Kasi sumusulong na ang ating bansa. Right. We, were being, we were being described as the new tiger cub economy of Asia. Our growth was going up. President Ramos was practically the Asian leader at, in, in APEC. You know, and... Uh, all of a right. sudden, along comes this thing, which which had nothing to do with us. Right, know? something then, we cannot uh, control. We couldn't control, and uh, we we ended up uh, being the the best survivor of the Asian financial crisis during the time of President Ramos. We had to institute all kinds of economic maneuvers in order to make sure that the economy will continue to grow. 
Right. Ang, ang, ang malungkot lang doon is after us. Medyo na ibang uh, kwento. Na iba na yung kwento. <laughs> so, wala na akong sasabihin na. Huwag na natin sa'yo. Huwag natin pa. <laughs> Agamamos lang tayo. Agamamos lang. Oh, pero, pero ito nga sa'yo. Ano, um, siguro yun. Importante yung flow of contemplation kasi ako rin parang there was a time na parang ano ba yung ginawa nila ba't hindi nila ginawa yung nakakaayon para iligtas yung buhay ng ating OFW. Pero I think the government did its very job but it, 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 we're against the legal system of Singapore na isang legal system na credible by the way. Na parang baka sinasabi natin na mali sila. And how would President Ramos say that as leader of the country? Na di ba the Pueba is not really mabigat. Di ba? Yun ang ano doon. You well, have to reverse of course, that. Of course the other question would be if if it was the reversed. Uh, hmm? Kung tayo naman, di ba? Kung tayo naman. Uh, we, have to, we have to stand by our own justice system. Right. So, so that was kind of difficult. That's but true. Yung, yung financial crisis, ang problema nun ay naapekto ng buong ekonomiya. Yeah. And uh, if we weren't able to make the appropriate moves, then uh, magkakaroon ng matas na inflation and so forth right. and so on. We're moving towards the ano, no, end of our interview, sir, kasi we do not want to take much of your time. But uh, I, I know na ano, no, uh, inclu- uh, itong, you yourself came from a family of freedom fighters, as we said. And you are currently the chairman of the Philippine Veterans Bank. Yung how important is the Philippine Centennial to President Ramos? Paano nyo nakita yung kahalagahan ng kasaysayan, ng birth ng kultura, ng birthday ng nation natin? Kay Pangulong Ramos. You know, he was always thinking in terms of how people we should not forget the historical and cultural context of the Philippines. Kaya yung battle cry niya for his administration, if you remember, was Philippines 2000. Diba? Right. Naka, naka kaya. In other words, the vision had to have a specific objective and time frame. Okay, hindi yung hindi yung puro political uh, polit- political lang. At the Parang same time, yan yata yung sinabi niya na medium term Philippine development plan. Yan ang lagi right. mukhang bibig noon. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we were approaching the 100th anniversary of the uh, uh, Philippines as a republic. Right. Okay, when we were when we began to self-govern so it was very important in his mind that people will not only not forget it, but should be celebrated nationwide appropriately with everybody understanding what our heroes from 100 years ago were able to do right. to, to establish where we are today. Of course, this included the heroes of the, of the Philippine revolutions against Spain, but also the heroes of the of uh, the veteran community who fought against immense odds against uh, the, the Japanese Imperial Army. And those people at the time they did this were practically just out of their teens. And of course, uh, uh, President Ramos being himself a soldier could understand what it means to put your life on the line for your country even as you know, anytime now, a bullet might hit you and that's the end of you. Right. So, uh, so that, that, that is about as, as um, stark a, a way of understanding what patriotism is when you're prepared to die for your country. And I think, uh, no, sir, no? Uh, because he fought in Korea. He fought he in fought, Korea. He fought in Korea. Uh, uh, in 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 defense of democracy at hindi right. iri ha ano yon barilan yon at mano-mano yung, na banan ha <laughs> hindi yan yung katapang-tapangan sa, <laughs> sa speeches ano o yeah. katapang-tapangan sa sa pelikula mm-hmm. no eh, eh yung sa kanya tunay yon right kasi nando ka sa kalagitnaan ng giyera habang pumuputok ang kung ano nang bomba baril ganun but you're doing it because you believe in a cause that is important for mankind and important for your countrymen. Sir, uh, last two questions, ano? but 
anyway, I have to say, isa rin sa kinabibilin ban ko kay Dr. Bobby, noon pa, noong pang bata ko, nung ako high school pa, ay yung kanyang boses. Kaya, <laughs> kapag ka si Sir Bobby ay nagiging, ano, kaibigan ko, si Bani Logroño at si Mike Guillermo, uh, 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 sa ano, yung uh, Unsurrendered, which is yes. the best documentary. Kayo ko ang presenter nun. Uh, yes. Uh, right. I, and I also was part of it. Kaso parang two sentences lang ako. Ano? Ako yung nagsabi ng title. <laughs> so, anyway, pero ang ganda nung, ang ganda nung ano. At saka pa, steering, no? You, you, uh, you, you, you had a speech there at the showing of Unsurrendered at the Metropolitan Theater. And, and talagang uh, it's a steering speech about patriotism. And, and someone who obviously loves his country. Pero ito yung tanong ko, ano, what is your favorite part? Kasi you, you have a big part. According to Celeste and to Marian, you are a big part of the website. Hindi lang kayo overseer. You really read everything. Na dumaan talaga sa mata nyo lahat. What was your favorite part of the text or the photos or the website that uh, na naiisip ninyo? Hmm. It's very hard to say. Hmm. Maybe those pictures with President Ramos inside his car with a cigar in his <laughs> mouth. Right, right. Still working, even though he's inside the car, because that gives you a, a, uh, a summarized picture of a person who was dedicated to his work and to his country. And, and no matter where he was, everything had to do with accomplishing objectives that were good for the country. Um, and yeah, I know that one is, I don't know of any other president after him who worked <laughs> as hard everywhere, practically <laughs> everywhere. Uh, in, in parang fact, office, no, parang office yung oh, yeah, loob no, ng car niya. And you know, when, even when we were in the state visits, pumunta kami sa Amerika. Alam mo, yung mga, yung mga secret service ang, ang umaayaw sa, sa schedule ni FBR. Kasi, kasi lang kasi, nagsasabing sumusoba. Oh, pwede, pwede, pwede ba mag second shift na tayo at uh, <laughs> nahirapan na sila kasi sige, 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 it's the FBR. So I guess that's one of the ones I, 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 I would point out. Because it summarizes the kind of president he was. And if you, oh, Prince Charles, King Charles na ngayon, look, uh, visited the yeah. country. Uh, uh, and yes. then you look at these images, to this, uh, if these images, ano, makikita nyo na you feel proud no? o na Pilipino yes. ka. Kasi among he the was, world uh, leaders. He was a leader among leaders. You know, uh, even the other leaders recognized him to be a leader. Even the Mahathir, even uh, even uh, Lee Kuan Yew, and so forth. He was a leader among leaders here in Southeast Asia, and he was recognized all around the world for that. Sir, that's why, you, mm. yeah. See, that's, that's why. why. That's why he was invited by the Queen, by the Prime Minister of England, by the by the President of France, by the Emperor of Japan, on and on and on, because they respect they respected him. And because of their respect for him, they increased their respect for the Philippines. Sir, uh, allow me, no? Uh, just before I give my final, final question, sir. I'm sorry, no? Pero talagang gusto ko lang iparinig ito. Behind the red pen, kasama ho natin, the author, si Terencio, Jojo Terencio. Maraming salamat sa online presidential library, panlaban sa fake news at historical revisionism. With the endless flow of info through the online library, it will be a huge help in writing the BTRP book too. Ah, paano no, ano, abangan natin yan, ano? Jerick Simpanlikan from Tarlac, sana'y magkaroon tayo ng mga ganyan, pati sa ibang presidente, para may reference sa mga bata at gurong sa kanilang research. Physical at virtual um, library, malaking tulong po yan para sa kabataan natin, para hindi lang ta mga taon at mga highlights ng kanilang, kanilang administrasyon, administrasyon ang madalas nalalaman ng mga bata tulad sa ibang textbook. Well, wala naman tayong magagawa because textbook have to be brief. But that's why you have this kind of facility like the FBR Presidential Library. So sir, siguro, as, as, as a final note, sir, siguro, um, how do you summarize uh, in, <clears throat> probably in one phrase the legacy of President Fidel B. Ramos? <laughs> one phrase uh, world class leadership and good governance that's how I would describe it 
Oh. At siyempre tulad ng lagi na sinasabi, kaya natin to. Philippines 2000, mabuhay tayong lahat. Mabuhay. mabuhay. So, Bobby, I do hope that uh, I can interview you for another time in a show sa ibang bagay. Maybe we can deep, 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 sure. uh, dive deeper to some aspects. Favorite namin si FBF. This is our, I think this is our third FBR uh, uh, ano, um, episode here. Maraming pong salamat, Sir Bobby. Thank At you. Thank po you, kayo. Thank you. Iyon, Good evening. No? Good evening. Nako, nap- napakinggan niyo po uh, Dr. Bobby De Ocampo. Napakagaling po no? at naranasan po natin ang ganyang uh, pakikipagkwentuhan sa kanya. It's a, such a huge honor. Uh, okay, no? uh, world class leadership. Uh, again, President Ramos, hindi naman siya perfect, di ba? All human beings, all leaders, di ba? There could have been missteps, there could have been... But talaga naman nakita niyo nag-effort ang tao. And again, I, I don't want to editorialize kasi sabi na FBR legacy doesn't want to editorialize but it's there. Well, of course, there's a little bit of, of course, editorializing in the selection of each. Pero yung you let the people, wag masyadong too much interpretation. You just put the facts there. It's very good. no? Talagang napaganda. And we, we commend the FBR team for that. No, mamaya, pasasalamatan sila ni Ma'am Marian sa ating interview sa kanya. Okay, so we will now proceed no to uh, uh magano muna tayo no. We'll we'll have a, a break and then after that we we'll proceed with our um with our next uh interview po uh, tonight. Uh, uh, by the way, before that, sige basahin muna natin Isaya Kangwi Noel Orozco, my e, my girlfriend. Uh, Isaya Isaya Kangwi Kangwi watching from Kenya. Uh Jill Traso Bangshal, hello po. Uh, Jeric Simpanlikan, uh, Emilia Pantagkasnases, Rosalie Fernandez Naong, Asmin Fatima Aranas Ariap, no? at uh, marami pang iba. Uh, bago natin uh, uh, isama yung ating next interview. Opo, nasa na yun? Ha, ay, hindi. Ito, ito pala, ito, ito pala. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ayan. Thank you po. Uh, Donna May, Teresa Texon, Jean Ramos, LV Bayon. No. Um don um maraming salamat po. Maris Masilungan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lionel Casimiro. Celeste Di Makulangan po from RP Dev. Set 500 stars to Vival. Vival, bigay niyo sa akin 'yan. Joke, joke, joke. Joke, joke, joke. Di suporta natin ng Vival kasi this foundation is really helping a lot of teachers with our uh programs po, no? Opo. Oo, napakaganda. Napakaganda. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, sige. Um, okay. So sige, uh, we'll now proceed uh, uh, to the next part after this uh, break. There's a, uh, um, there's a, an explanation by our curator of the FBR Legacy website about what you will see in the website. And then we proceed to our interview tape as live. And I'll see you after uh, the interview of uh, our next guest. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. This is a wonderful occasion and it is my privilege to walk you through the first presidential library online for our country. You are looking at the homepage of the President Fidel V. Ramos Library online. The overall look for the site is one of formality and discipline. Two formal fonts make up the graphic system. The homepage visual is a video excerpted from the presidential inauguration. The first visual, therefore, of the site is the highlight of an illustrious career. The palette is a contemporary render of red, blue, and white. And the logo is designed to convey gravitas. Website architecture is organized according to five data fields. The titles of the data fields are organized horizontally on the topmost part of the web page. You will see that there are no other hotspots on a very clean page except that there is one clickable hotspot at the bottom which leads the user to a timeline. The timeline is a quick capture of the president's life which some users may want to browse through before plunging into what 
are very, very long fields of content. The face of President Ramos is seen whenever the user returns to the home page. And thus, we keep reminding the person who is entering this website that this is the life of a very unusual Filipino. The browser who will click on the hotspot that says timeline will be brought to a space or a page in which horizontal swiping will allow a very quick capture of the life of President Fidel V. Ramos. That life will be revealed through photographs that are highly selected and very short captions. These two elements are juxtaposed with what was happening in the world at the same time. In other words, we are contextualizing an unusual life across the panorama of the 20th and the 21st centuries. Here are the five data fields. Firstly, the early years, and that should be self-evident in terms of what it contains. The second one concerns the soldier builder, his education and his early career. The third data field is entitled Transformation at EDSA, and again, this will be self-evident to the user or the browser or the very serious scholar as to what would be contained under this. Fourthly, the presidency. So it's entitled Ramos, Unity, Solidarity, Teamwork. The three words that characterized the presidency. And finally, the last data field concerns the life of the president as an elder statesman. And it is entitled Mastering Statecraft. Upon clicking one of the five data fields, the browser or the more serious caller will be brought to a page that looks like this. This is the portal to very deep layers of information. The arrow going downwards points to the uh, reiteration of the title of the data field. The arrow going upwards shows the sub data fields, which are individually clickable. In this particular page, the user can click on the president's lineage or to his youth along an axis that goes from rural to urban settings and to his nuclear family. Upon clicking the data field entitled Soldier Builder, the user now comes into a page that shows two choices. One is about the soldier in the Cold War and the second is the soldier back at the home front. Each of these sub-data fields contain a huge amount of information that would be useful not only to this present generation of Filipinos, but to future generations. And thus, the designers of this website, and myself as the curator, decided that the detail will be necessary, and so we did not truncate the data. We refined the layout or the sequencing of the data, but we kept the length of the data field. Clicking into the data field entitled Transformation at EDSA, the user is led into the choices. Firstly, emergence from martial law. Secondly, Ramos pivots towards EDSA. And thirdly, after EDSA, coups d'etat. President Ramos was at that time Secretary of Defense for President Aquino and prior to that, uh, the Vice Chief of Staff of the Republic of the Philippines. These events are recollected from the perspective of Mr. Ramos and his archive and will be the source of insight for many generations to come. The data field that is thickest and most dense is this data field entitled Ramos, Unity, Solidarity, and Teamwork. This concerns his presidency and the choices for the user are as follows. Philippines 2000, the second is Building the Peace, and the third is Institutionalized People Power. The information is voluminous, and we have allowed for this voluminous amount of information to be available for analysis to anyone 
who is interested in the Philippines at this point in its history, but also to the man who became pivotal in how the history of the Republic shifted from the 20th century into the 21st century. The more serious scholars would be allowed to enter the archive itself. Oral history, documents, photographs, and videos. Thank you very much indeed. Please have a feel of this web page. We believe it will be most engaging and indeed compelling. Ngayon po, kasama naman po natin ang, uh, well, I, I hope I can say ating kaibigan, kasama po natin siya sa Dubai Exposition uh, noong uh, 2022. No, isa po siya sa mga nag-curate no, noong uh, tinatawag nating Philippine Pavilion doon at naging speaker kami doon noong uh, February 2022. At uh, siya po ang uh, president and uh, founder ng Tao Inc. No, wala pong iba kundi si Dr. Marian Pastor Roses. Makasaysayang gabi po, Mama Marian. Makasaysayang gabi. Uh, oh. Magsimula tayo sa isang uh, pagkukorekt, ano? Ay, sige po. Ako ako so, ako po ay sige ng Roses. Apo, 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 apo. Sige po, sige po. Ginang ah. pa ba kong Buda? Ginang pa ba kong Buda? O, oh, ag. <laughs> hindi halata. <laughs> Go wrong, miss. <laughs> Oo, oh, 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 hindi po, hindi po. Okay. Sige po, sige po. Okay. Sige po. Uh, ngayon po, uh, before we go to FBI Legacy, kasi si ma'am din ang curator ng FBI Legacy, we want to know a little bit more about her. Pero ito, favorite question namin sa mga guests namin. Hindi ko na ilagay sa ating preliminary questions. Ma'am, do you remember your very first memory as a child? Huh? <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. At the top of your head, ha? Hmm, at the top of my head. Ano po? Malaki kasi ang kinalakhan ko na bahay, actually kung saan ako pinanganak, ay right. isang lumang lumang bahay. Luma na siya nung pinanganak ako. Dahil ito ay itinayo noong 1883. Right. So nung pinanganak ako ay luma na siya. Ang lolo ko ay napakahilig sa music bagamat siya isang doktor. Uh, hindi naman siguro malayo yung medisina at saka musika. Uh, bagamat siya ay kondoktor uh, ng koro ng bayan, palaging nandun sa bahay namin yung uh, amateur choir baga, ng bayan, ng Batangas City, uh, mahilig din siya sa opera. So, sabay sa kanyang hilig yung kundiman at saka opera. Mm. Uh, ang hindi ko makakalimutan ay ewan ko kung bakit ako, dahil siguro ako ang unang ako, Uh, at doon ako lumalaki doon sa matandang bahay na yung kasama nila so ako lamang ang bata pero nakahiligan niya na maglagay ng isang silya sa gitna ng bahay nakaharap siya sa pagdanan at uh, papatayin niya ang lahat ng ilaw at makikita siya ng opera ako lamang ang kasama oh, wow. ako lamang talaga ang siguro ako yung limang taon o pitong taon wala lang. Kami lang maglolo. Ang ganda kasi, um, parang may isang gumamit ng first memory as a beginning of his memoirs. Oo, oh, nagkakamali si Winston Churchill. At mm. uh, parang ano eh, it, it denotes daw what the person would become. ba diba? <laughs> So parang kung titignan mo, nandun na nga, ano no? Ano pala kayo mo? Diba? Cultural worker, opera, kundiman, all the, the old house which still Tama exists. Mm-hmm. Diba? By the way, which eventually, I think the items there uh, imprinted on you a taste in curating, in arranging things, diba? mm-hmm. which are cultural. So, yan, yan ang favorite namin na first question lagi because we want to know the guests a little bit more. So, thank well, you for that. No? Apo. Pero ewan ko lang ha, uh, maaari mong isipin na gano'n, pero maaari mo din isipin na pag gano'ng kalumang bahay, um, hindi naman pumapasok sa isip namin na ayusin. Cultural. Yeah. 
kasi dahil pag nagki-curate ka, nag interpret ka, di ba? Right. So, ang um, aming, parang yung silya nandiyan lang. Hindi naman sa hindi ginagalaw, pero basta, hindi naman namin iniisip na galaw-galawin, di ba? Uh, uh, Naglalaroan, pero hindi, kumbaga, hindi kinu-curate. Right, right. So, um, ang, ang mahalaga doon sa akin ay yung um, itong taong ito, Ah, pati din ang lola ko, ang lola ko nag, uh, nagka-piano din. Uh, lalo na pag may brown out. So lahat ng sampung anak niya ay uh, kumakanta. <laughs> Kakatawa pa, kakantahin nila o oh, ilaw. Pag wala, <laughs> pag wala ng ilaw. Pag wala ng ilaw. ilaw. <laughs> Kakanta sila lahat. Siyam na lalaki. Tatay ko at saka mga tiyo ko. Ang lola nagka-piano. Pero ang hindi ko makalimutan yung lolo ko. Na for some reason, kasama niya itong batang maliit. Right. Hindi na ako maalis. Nandun lang ako. Hindi naman kami nag-uusap. Nandun lang ako. Ang ganda, no? Mm. Parang may connection kahit ganun lang. Ay, pa paano? Oo. Oh, oh. And, wow, wow, wow. And this house still exists. And anong name ng ancestral house na ito, ma'am? Ano? Yung ancestral house niyo. Ano yung name? Well, ang aking, anong ano? May name yan eh, di ba? Yung family name. Ako, ako sa pastor, ancestor. Uh, in, in, dahil in, sa mabla ko ito, uh, mm. ako sa ang kanyang apelido, pero mm. napasalin sa pastor nung naging asawa niya ang aking lolo. At sa kwento niyo nga, dahil uh, sana we still... Uh, I will go there kahit tayo na lang uh, mag-sked ka. Uh, uh, mag-schedule tayo. Uh, dahil uh, it still produces the great music. The piano yata is still okay, there. Yeah. Oh, uh, nadagdag, nadagdagan pa ng piano. Nadagdagan. Oh. At mas madami pang kumakanta doon. Yeah, wow, wow. So, before we go to FBI Legacy, uh, again, na, na, na ano nyo natin, na, na, na touch na natin yung curating, no? You are known in the cultural world uh, as a curator. Uh, i-explain natin sana sa mga manonood, uh, ano ba yung gawain itong isang curator? Yung iba, hindi masyadong naririnig ito. At bakit siya mahalaga in the presentation of history? Kasi kasaysayan kay saya. Bakit siya, ano yung naitutulong niya para maipresenta ang kasaysayan? Well, ang unang kailangan sigurong maunawaan ay hindi naman uh, history lamang right. ang uh, hinahawakan ng mga curator. May curator ng Science Museum, right. curator ng name it, Geology, Uh, may museum ng pelikula, uh, kung ano-ano pa, no? maaring, maaring may museo ng halimbawa, halaman. So, iba-iba yan. Uh, ang iba't ibang klaseng museum, may mga kategorya, kaya tinatawag natin Museum of Anthropology, Museum of Natural History, etc. May Contemporary Art Museum. At uh, yung Contemporary Art, maaring sabihin may history pa rin yan dahil ang kanilang hinahawakan disiplina ay art history. Uh, pero maari din taliwas sa art history ang uh, mga contemporary art museum dahil uh, itong contemporary art nga mismo ay uh, ang definition niyan ay yung tumatalikod sa modernismo. Yes. So, um, kung ano-ano yan. Pero ano yung palaging gawain ng isang curator. Dahil hindi naman po kami tagasabit ng, ng lumang baro at say. So, <laughs> Kalimitan yun ang iniisip ng mga tao sa okay. curator. Uh, at hindi din po ito pareho ng interior designer. Right. Uh, kalimitan, kailangan ko din ipaliwanag ang diferensya ng curator at yung arkitekto noong gusali. Right. Although may mga arkitekto na binibigyan ng karapatang mag-curate. Meron din ganon. Okay. Pero kung curate lamang po ang ating pag-uusapan, may kasaysayan din itong disiplinang ito. Yes. At nagsimula yan doon sa salitang kura na konektado sa mga kura paroko. May, parang may, may pagka-priesthood, taga-alaga right. kung ano mang mahalaga. Right. Diba? Ano naman ang mga kura. Curate. Uh, yeah. Oo. So yung curate ay konektado doon sa mga kura mm-hmm. noong unang panahon. Pero itong pagpasok na ng ikadalong pong uh, 
sa dalawampung siglo, no? Uh, hanggang ngayon, at tuloy-tuloy na yan, nagkaroon ng kaal ng... Uh, Pagkaroon ng pagkakaunawa, ng napakalalim na unawa at pag, uh, pagtingin, pagbalik tingin sa practice na ito. Uh, kung ano nga baga ang ginagawa nito. So, ang maliwanag ng pagbabago nitoong isang daang taon na nakalipas sa buong mundo ito, maliwanag na ang curator ay isang tagapag-interpret. ng datos. Right. Pero hindi po nakasalalay ang trabaho po namin ay hindi nag interpret sa aklat, sa pahina ng aklat. At hindi po kami nag interpret halimbawa sa imahe, sa pelikula. Mm-hmm. Uh, o hindi kami nag interpret sa pagpe-painting. Right. Ang curator po ay nag interpret sa paglalagay ng bagay sa isang lugar. So, kung mahalaga sa amin yung lugar. Spasyo. Hanggang, Hanggang ngayon, bagamat ngayon, ay uh, maaring ang lugar ay digital space. Right. Uh, ang mahalaga ay kung saan yon Kasi kung isipin mo, ang painting o uh, pahina ng aklat uh, at yung mga dating mga medium ng interpretation uh, sa mga historiador, halimbawa, uh, flat yan eh. babasahin sa mata, di ba? Yes. Mata ang ginagamit. Kung ikaw naman ay musician, ang interpretation mo, ang uh, tenga, uh, mm-hmm. sa dance katawan, no? Sa amin po, lahat yun, dahil ang aming inaasinta, ano ba ang pakiramdam ng dumadaan ka sa isang place? Mm-hmm. Nakita ka ganito, sa lugar na yan, tapos sunod dyan, may makikita ka sa kantong yon, Magkakabit yung parang nag-uusap yon. Pag nilagay mo doon, may sinasabi yun uh, na sunod ng iyong naranasan. Kung ang iyong dinaanan ay masikip, kung ang dinaanan mo ay maluwag, kung ang dinaanan mo ay pataas, pababa, kasama lahat yun sa pag-curate. Right. Dahil ang iyong medium, ang kasangkapan mo ay space. Correct. At mga gamit sa space. At ngayon, hindi gamit lang. Maari kang maglagay ng sound sa isang kwarto. maari ka maglagay ng um, ng nagdo-drawing o ngayon maari ka maglagay ng interactive sa isang lugar pero ang importante yung paano ka nagkikwento mm-hmm. sa pamamagitan ng yung nararanasan ng katawan ng mismo yung pagpasok ng katawan sa isang lugar tapos na rin kasi yung panahon na yung espasyo na museo na tinitingnan natin ito na nga papas na yung debate noon sa minimalistic Diba kasi noong unang panahon, naalala ko, basta may lumang gamit, sama-sama, museum na. Diba? Ngayon, experience na siya, experiential. Diba? May mga video, may mga, yun, may mga pinipindot-pindot ka, parang nag interact ka. And um, this is a very complicated discipline. Hindi siya basta-basta. No? At, hindi ko namang ipaliwanag ito. No? Na, ang nagbago ay hindi yung... Hindi yung isang katutak na laman versus uh-huh. um, mas ingat ang, ang pagkakalagay. Uh-huh. Pagkakalagay. Hindi yun ang pagkakaiba. Mm-hmm. Uh, yun ay parang simptoma lang ng mas malalim na pagkakaiba. Mm-hmm. Ang pagkakaiba ay ang mga curator ngayon ay nagsasanay examinin ang sarili nilang pag-iisip. Ang sarili nilang interpretasyon. Dahil nung araw, may interpretasyon din yun eh. Yung samot sa yes. ha, Meron din iniibig sabihin yun, di ba? Hindi lang aware yung curator na may iniibig sabihin siya. Ngayon, mm. ang mga curator, kailangan aware. Kailangan alam mo na pag naglagay ka ng, bigyan kita ng halimbawa, mm. uh, mayroong isang contemporary art exhibit sa isang napakalaking museum sa Amerika at uh, iba-iba multicultural yung mga artist na naka-exhibit, may... naglagay ng may curator na naglagay ng painting ng isang uh, Black American sa tabi ng kubeta. Oh, oh my God. Malaking ano yon? Uh, bubu. Yeah, oh my God. Malaking, malaking, malaking may rally, may lahat. So ngayon mas aware ang mga curator na uh, hindi. Ganda. Kung ano ang iyong mm. inisabihin, di ba? So mm. inilagay mo yung isang bagay sa sahig, anong ibig sabihin nun? Right. So, ay naglagay sa inilagay mo sa ere o inilagay mo sa labas 
ano ang anong iyong sinasabi. Ngayon, ginajudge ang curator uh, ayon sa uh, linis ng interpretation. Ta, maganda 'yung sinabi niyo kasi una, no kasi unang panahon parang minsan makalat, 'di ba? Parang hindi mo alam kung ano 'yung tema. That's one. Mm-hmm. Tapos yung tama kayo, ang ganda nung sinabi nyo na pwedeng hindi, may mga interpretation doon, kahit na sabihin mong marami. Halimbawa, sa mga old museums, yung power, yung discourse of power, marami ako. Halimbawa, yung kitsch ni Imelda doon sa mansion niya sa Tacloban, na ang dami-dami niyang nilalagay. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Kasi nasabi niya, nakapunta ako sa maraming lugar, bahala kayo sa buhay niyo, di ba? But, mm-hmm. but also, maganda yung sinabi nyo, pinoint out nyo, about the politics of the politics of the interpretation of museums or museums art in general culture in general is not neutral no it's Napak- never neutral never neutral napakahalaga po noon no uh, lahat yan ay may mensahe lahat yan ay kaila- at ito yung tinuturo sa akin eh si ma'am lagi uh, kaya natutuwa ako pag may correction si ma'am sa lahat ng dealings namin from time immemorial di ba na Na, it's okay, it's okay. Kasi na, nakikita mo dito yung pagiging maingat. We have to be careful because everything, every line in a, in, a, in, 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 in the smallest caption has an implication. Oh, yun ang kailangan maintindihan. Including, including ginawa mong pula yung gallery. No. <laughs> including, um, minsan nagkaroon ng malaking debate pa noong 1980s. No, ngayon hindi na din i-debate. Ginawang orange nung isang uh, curator yung gallery. Mm. Uh, na state museum. So, ang laki ng debate, ginagawa bang decorative? Uh, ano ba ang iniibig sabihin ni curator? Uh, ito right. ang art na hindi iginagala. Uh, Siyempre yung debate, uh, iba-iba yan sa pag- pagdaloy ng panahon, di ba? Pero may debate palagi. Ngayon, ang debate maari sa maliit na bagay. Na, right. Ang kapatid natin maliit na bagay. Halimbawa, sinabi mo, itong amor solo na ito, lagyan mo ng caption, sinabi mo 1953. Hindi pala 1953, 1954 pala. You know, mm. a, a curator can fall on that mistake. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oo, para mga historian, hindi naman yeah, pwede. Yeah, definitely. Ay 1953, di ba? Dahil, as you historians know, pag mali ang iyong date, baka ang laki na nangyari sa mundo between 1953 and 1954. That's true. Baka yeah. iba na ang konteksto ng pagsasalin o pag-unawa. Baka madami nang nangyari, di ba? Right. Uh, it might not be a small thing. That's true. That's Or, true. Baka nakakalusot yung curator na meron siyang pinapahiwatig na medyo underhanded. Maaring <laughs> yun. Di ba meron nagpapalusotin na ah. Or, or the most basic, which is nagpapalusot ng mas, mas luma, yung ganot, kung hindi masyadong maayos na curator. Uh... Kaya ang mga curator, uh, ito ang paniwala ko, ay uh, hindi maaring dealer. Mm... Hindi talaga po yun. Uh, hindi pwedeng pagsamahin yung market at saka yung curator. Mm-hmm. Controversial point. <laughs> not a controversial point. It's not. It is part of the practice of curation. Mm-hmm. It, is, it, is, it is not controversial. All curators cannot be part of markets. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng tawagin curator ang part ng market? Hindi maaari tawagin curator ang dealer. Mm-hmm. Uh, or collector. Right, right. That's true. Kasi you legitimize your collection. Mm-hmm. and you use the museum to legitimize your collection, that right. is already a curatorial error. That's yeah. an error of judgment na. Wow, 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 wow. Diba? Uh, kung ikaw ay nagbebenta, paano mo masasabi na fair ang iyong interpretation? Tama. Hindi mo masasabi yun. You cannot claim that. Kasi may agenda. May agenda yun. Ano? Whether you're a good person or a bad person, yeah, doesn't matter eh. Right. Kasi yung iyong curatorial premise, hindi tatayo. Mm-hmm. Hindi tatayo. Kasi maaring sabihin, ah, kaya mo ginawang ganito ang kwento para tumaas ang hindi. Well, yeah, exactly. maaring, sabi- maaring sabihin ng publiko. Kahit mm-hmm. hindi yung totoo. Kahit hindi yun ang intention mo. Yes. Right. Kahit magkait right. ng tao. Right, right, At right. At iwasan na yung maisip na gano'n dahil sayang yung exhibit. Kung, oh. kung doon papasok ang ang kwento. 
Di ba, Grabe. Sayang. Oo. Maselan pala talaga yan. Ha? Maselan na maselan. Maselan Ayun, na maselan. Um, ang, ang pagtutuloy niyan, siyempre may pagsasanay kung paano mo nga i-interpret ng ayos. Uh, hmm. Dahil madami tayong tools ng interpretation. Yan. Ang mahalaga sa isang curator ay maliwanag ang kanyang kinatatayo ang philosophical ground. Ganda. Ah, uh... Magandang premise na to doon sa next question natin about Tao Inc. Oh, <laughs> oh, kasi uh, kasi siyempre kailangan din kahit pa paano sustainable no itong gawain natin bilang mga cultural workers and isang model yung ginawa ninyo. Uh, baka pwedeng matuto din yung ibang mga cultural workers na nakikinig sa atin. Ano yung mga uh, so for example that you, you you talked about the thin line between yun nga, yung pina, ina-appraise mo, pinapataas mo masyado yung value for, you know, I mean, let's, let's, example. let's example. call the, ano, no? hmm. let's call the elephant in the room, yung auction-auction, ganyan. Eh, okay. How do you tow the line uh, uh, sa Tao may, Inc.? May I, uh, may, may I, uh, Ay, sige, a slight clarification. The auction houses are perfectly legitimate because they do not claim to be museums. Yes, that's true. Yes, yes. They're often houses, so li- lihitin mo ang kanilang kalakal. Mm. May, may kalakal na ganyan sa buong mundo eh. Hindi naman problema yon. Hindi naman sila nagpapanggap na museo sila. Right, 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 Nag- right. Sila ay nagtitinda ng art. That's fine. Right, right. Huwag lang natin lituhin. Tama, tama. Okay, very good, ma'am. Pero maganda rin yung i-clarify din natin. Ano yung mga parang considerations nyo? For example, sa Tao Inc., uh, so sa pagkakabuo ninyo nito, uh, kumusta po siya? Uh, may nahirapan ba kayo? How, how, okay. how did it go? Hanggang ngayon, nahihirapan ako. Mm. Ano, halos, uh, well, Tao was created in the 1990s, so halos ano siya. Ilang dekada na yan? 30 years na. 30 years na. Uh, created for 50 years. Wow. Yeah, because I began in 1974. Uh, so it, it's been 49 years, as a matter of fact. Wow. Ngayon, um, alam mo kasi, curatorially, lumaki ako, o, ang, ang kinagis ng ko yung, yung pagpasok ng uh, postmodernism. Right. Doon ako unang pumasok noong 1970s. Sa so, makatuwid, yung lahat ng struktura at Uh, pinagbabatayan ng modernismo, yun ang, yun ang uh, ginawa namin, mga kasaba, kasabayan ko, na i-criticize. Kasama na dyan ang um, the author, di ba? Yung kapangyarihan ng isang author. Yes. Oh, yung kapangyarihan ng mga museum, kapangyarihan ng market. Yung mm-hmm. Lahat naman yan ay, uh, lahat ay nagkaroon ng malalaking bodies of literature. Right. Iyon naman ang pag-aaralan talaga, yung mga bodies of literature na yan. Okay. Ngayon, napag-isipan ko na since uh, mahirap pagka ikaw ay empleyado ng halimbaw ng Estado, di siyempre meron kang naratibong hindi mo ma, hindi makapag, hindi ka makapiglas, di ba? Mm-hmm. Na kahit hindi kasang-ayon sa, o medyo o, iba ka sa daloy ng pag-iisip, hindi ka makaalis doon. So, Inisip ko na kung ako ay isang korporasyon at ako ay uh, tatanggap lamang ng trabaho ng mga kliyente, kung sino man sila, maaring state. Right. Pero it's a certain independence, di ba? Kasi I'm not the state. I cannot be really instructed, di ba? Right. Um, but it's easier said than done. Hindi naman naging madali ito eh. Kasi, mm-hmm. halimbawa, um, bibigyan kita ng halimbawa, nung ako ay nag... Uh, nagsimula uh, nag, uh, ang nag-approach sa akin ay mga kaibigan kong mayayaman sa Negros. Igawa hmm. ko daw sila ng museo sa Sugar. Oh so, my God. Sila, no? uh-uh. Okay. Maganda naman yung kasaysayan ng Sugar, di ba? Right. At nakikita ko naman na may saysay ang pagbibigay ng kasaysayan yan. Pero alam mo, napakadelikado nung line na ikaw ba ay nagiging apologist for the industry o ikaw ba ay nagiging parang advertiser ng right. industry ng asukal. Kasi pag nag-slip ka na doon, hindi ka na curator. Advertising ka na. Diba? PR na yan. PR na yan. Uh, diba? 
So, uh, sa kagandahan pala, na-convince ko sila na wag sugar ang tayo. Uh, wag sugar, wag sugar sa negros. Dahil pagpunta mo sa mga kabangkalan, sa ilog, sa uh, 1990s ito eh. Hindi na asukal ang kwento dyan eh. Di ba? Palay ang mm-hmm. kwento. Uh, hindi naman sugar ang buong negros eh. So, if it's provincial museum to sugar, hindi naman pwedeng iisang, iisang kwento. So, sinabi ko, baka naman pwedeng maraming kwento. Uh, sabi ko, isama natin yung iba. Ngayon, sugar pa rin naman ang gigit na dyan kahit hindi natin pilitin o isentro. Okay. Dahil lahat naman ng tao pumunta sa Negros ay dahil ng sugar. Right. Kasi ang tao sa Negros ay yung tinatawag nating negrito noon ng panahon. Diba? Wala namang ibang tao doon. Mm-hmm. Prior, di ba? Hanggang 1800, the early 19th century. So, uh, ang lahat ng pumunta dyan, uh, yung mga mayayaman na nag-establish ng sugar plantations dahil ng mga Britese, uh, kasi it, remember, this was uh, British, uh, a British move uh, right. to plant sugar in Central Philippines. Si Nicholas Loni, di ba? Yeah. 1850s yan. Okay, so yung mga mayayaman galing sa Iwilo, lumipat doon. Pagkatapos yung mga... Um, workers, lumipat din. Hindi lamang galing Iloilo, kundi galing uh, Bohol, Cebu, etc. No? Lahat yan may dala. May dalang kultura. Lahat yan may, may ambag di ba? sa Negros. Kasama na din yung mga Pranses na pumunta dyan, may mga European, etc. No? Uh, lahat yan may... So ang sabi ko sa kanila, maaari bang ang inyong museo ay sugar and other stories? Dahil ang daming iba-ibang story. Ganun lang. Shift it a little. Para right. yung PPR sa sugar industry, di ba? Shift it so that it becomes a meteor. So, okay, pumayag sila. So, that kind of negotiation is um, is is not easy. That's true. That's true. It's not easy. In that case, I'm happy that they agreed. And many times they don't. Many times they don't. Uh, many times they don't. Lalo na kapag contentious, ano? Well, Ayan. So, the time that I was asked to do uh, a museum to the mining industry, it it is technically a good history to find out about diba for right. for the children of the philippines diba pero kung ito ay magiging kasangkapan ng mining industry to make themselves look good that is another story yeah yeah so, so even if i'm a corporation meron talaga ako hirap na hirap ako pagtanggi diba pero to put it bluntly ano parang in a way for cultural workers para na rin kasi again cultural work is not cheap it's expensive you have to research you have to do your work you have hours diba to put there tapos lang yung iba sinasabi yun nga hindi nagpa ano parang hindi na, hindi hindi nila recognize na binabayaran yung kultura hindi pinagagagastusan and this is also reflection of the culture uh, of how we treat the cultural workers diba but here you have a model na uh, you get paid for saying what you want to say and what's okay. based on the research but uh, diba? but it doesn't happen um, easily. Yes. It, yes. It really is hard. Uh, client ka, may client ka eh. So yung, yung negotiation so, ang importante. Yung negotiation, napakahirap, di ba? Uh, tama, Mag- tama. Magkasub- pero hahanap ka ng lugar na magkakasundo kayo. Right, right. Maari naman maghanap ng lugar. That's true. Yan yung hindi naiisip nung iba na very, yun, laging, ito, itong tama, ito ang dapat, di ba? Pero you have to you have to play you, you have to ano hindi play around but really to to find the common ground yan ang importante lagi well, mm-hmm. um ganito hindi ko alam kung mahaba na masyado ang ating pinag-uusapan <laughs> pag FBI <laughs> legacy tayo after this <laughs> sige po <laughs> okay i i uh, i'll give you an example of uh, where it's not naman pagtutunggali palagi right or or paghahanap ng common ground Halimbawa, yung World Expo sa Saragossa, uh, sa Spain, ito ang ng Philippine Pavilion doon. Ang sabi sa akin, ang tema ng buong World Expo doon ay tubig. Kung ano ang ginagawa ng buong mundo tungkol sa tubig. Kung ano, ah, siyempre, ano na ito, uh, 21st century na ito, di ba? Mm. Uh, no, 20th, the end of the 20th century. So, ang tawag, ang call ng Saragossa sa buong mundo na pumunta kayo dito sa Expo at dito natin bubunuin ang problema ng tubig sa mundo. Okay. So, sa loob-loob ko, ano nga ba sasabihin ng Pilipinas dyan sa temang yan? Di ba? Parang, parang wala naman tayong ginagawa yata sa temang yan. I mean, I'm, I'm being, uh, uh, well, I guess I'm being frank uh, in recalling what it was at the time. Okay. 
right now, I don't know if we are really doing anything serious about water. So, nahirapan ako mag-isip ng territorial plan. <laughs> Kasi, well, firstly, you are in a world expo to present your country. Right. But it is curated. Hindi naman nga ako magsasabi na hindi totoo. O hindi ko naman i-spin yan. Di ba? So, mahirap maghanap ng ano nga ba ang maari natin ipagmalaki sa mundo. Right. So, para lang bigyan kita ng halimbawa ng hindi naman kailangang tunggalian dahil kalimitan nakakahanap ka ng lugar na hindi naisip. In the case of Tragosa, ang tinignan ko yung lahat ng mga NGO sa Pilipinas. And when, once you don't look at the state, you look down, you look at all the NGOs, so the, literally hundreds of projects on wow. water. Literally. Wow. On, uh, you know, seahorse conservation sa Panglao, mayroong seagrass conservation sa, you know, sa Pangasinan, uh, mayroong... Um, ang taas natin sa geothermal. Uh, we're number two in the world. So right. So geothermal energy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. As in literally hundreds of, of projects. Ngayon, kapit-kapit ba yung project na yan? No. Malalim ba yung mga project na yan? Yes. Some of them are 30 years old. Some of them are 50 years old. Gawa ng kanya-kanyang mga grupo. May LGU, may, may civil society, et cetera. Yun ang sinokos ko. Right an archipelago of projects. Hmm. Yun. So wow. nakakahanap ka talaga ng ano, nakakahanap ka ng, uh, ito pwede natin ipagbalaki ito. You have to be creative talaga and and think really and, and research is important. Research yeah, is very important. Research, so yun, research is very important. Pina, pinasuyod ko kung anong ginagawa talaga. Dami natin natututunan ngayon. No? Puntahan natin ngayon yung FBR Legacy So, siguro in another time, we talk about your Bagsamoro Museum kasi another interesting thing. Mahahaba tayo. But uh, ang FBI Legacy po, website po yan. Now, as in, kanina, medyo napasadahan nyo na. Pero why do we... Uh, yung iba kasi, di ba, ano lang ng website, gawa lang ng gawa ng website. Pero ito, nagkaroon ng curator ang isang presidential uh, museum website. No? Presidential library website. Uh, bakit kailangan na magkaroon ng isang curator ang isang uh, digital space? Yung pagbabalanse ng uh, diin, mm. uh, alin ang didiinan, right. alin ang... Um, kasi isang katutak yan eh. It's, it's, it's a huge body of data. Right. So, para kang editor. Pareho din naman yun eh. Kung meron kang malaking body of data, kailangan mo ng editor. Uh, natawag lamang na curator sapagkat ito ay hindi libro, hindi ito aklat. Right. Ito talaga ay library. So, ang library is um, metadata, di ba? May data ka sa loob ng libro, may data ka sa loob ng larawan, may data ka sa lo- loob ng, ng records, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, but you're really, uh, you're really looking at metadata. Ano yung data na na nasa ibabaw ng lahat na maliliit na bahagi ng, <laughs> ng informasyon, di ba? Kasi right. hindi mo talaga, hindi ito isang libro kasi eh. Kung libro kaya mong isipin na editing. Right. Di ba? Li- you're not just dealing with words. No. Di ba? So for example, uh, sige, punta nating website ngayon. No? If you're going to look at it, di ba? Yung importante dyan, nalimbawa, ito mismong, ito, ito ilalagay mo dito. Oo. Kailangan consistent ka dyan. Hindi, Hindi ilalagay mo dito, di ba? Hmm? Kung naan nag-architecture niyan, pero hindi right. ako tamang kasi may grupo naman kami. At saka right. natutuma naman kami ng mga dating dating close-in ni President Ramos. Mm-hmm. At nagkasundo kami dito sa architecture. So ito ang tawag ko ng architecture. Ano mm-hmm. ang struktura nitong website? Uh, so naisip namin na siyempre yung early years, siguro hiwalay na yon, di ba? That's yes. logical. Eh, naging mahalaga sa amin pagsisiyasat yung idea na siya isang sundalo. Right. And not only because of the, you know, the linear progression of a biography, which means that you really have to touch kung sino ang sundalo, di ba? Uh, kung ano ang sundalo. But in his case kasi, he was an engineer. Wow. Oo nga. And so, 
para maunawaan, ito ang nasa isip ko, para maunawaan ng kabataang Pilipino o yung mga nag-aaral, no? um, ano ang pinakamabuting gawin kasi hindi ito maaring isang, ganito ang territorial plan ha? para lumiwanag. And I'm sure Mr. Do Ocampo had mentioned this to you. Hindi mm-hmm. pwede kami ang mag-interpret mm-hmm. ang mga gumawa nito o ang curator nito. Ang importante sa aming usapan ay magbigay kami ng karampatang datos para mga scholar pagdating ng panahon, sila ang magtagni-tagni pero nandiyan ang data. Wow. So diba? parang as plain as possible, as factual as, as, as possible. possible. Nilinis namin ang mga words. Ako, nilinis ko talaga ang mga salita uh, na ginamit. Uh, natulungan kami ng, ng grupo ni FBR mismo at ni Mr. De Ocampo mismo. Uh, na, na nagsasabi na ipabaya natin sa mga susunod na henerasyon o sa mga scholar, uh, mga political scientist, mga um, kahit na anthropologist, historian, sila ang mag interpret Ang ating mm-hmm. ibigay ay ano ang pinakamagandang structure o yung tawag ko architecture na madali silang makahanap ng hinahanap nila. Right. We also were quite aware na siyempre may hindi mo maiiwasan na gumawa ng, ng structure. Yes. And naging maliwanag sa pagpupulong namin, pati sa, uh, sa uh, pamilya, si uh, FVR, na ang pananaw niya sa mundo, pamula sa mula, is really uh, engineering at saka pagsusundan. Soldier and engineer, yes. Mm-hmm. Yun, yun ang parang, kung, kung tatanungin mo siya mismo, yun ang kanyang sasabihin na yun ang nagbubog ng kanyang pananaw sa mundo. Alright, so if we go back to the website, to the page, uh, uh, to page. Apo, taas natin. Yan. Oh, sa, sa taas, sa taas pa. Yan, oh. so yung transformation at EDSA, sabi namin, piho hahanapin yan. Pagka wala yan, oh, malaking puwang, di ba? Hahanapin yan ng mga scholar. Right. So, kailangan may isang grupo ng data na nandyan yan talaga. Pero itong number four, ito yung naging presidente siya. And it naman, maliwanag doon sa mga taong naging kasama niya, kasama na pati ang kanyang kabinete, na yan ay uh, hindi lamang sa kanya, hindi lang kay FBR, pero yung pinagsama-sama nila, pinagsamasamahan nilang trabaho. Ito right. Yung, Thousand. So, for better or for worse, yan ang kanilang ginawa. So, inilatag natin para kung sino man ang gusto mag-analisan yan sa pagdating ng panahon, nandyan ang data. Which is very important, I think, curatorially because a lot of this data have not been put together. That's true. That's Hindi true. talaga yan napagsama-sama. Eh, maswerte tayo na yung close-in ni, uh, ni FBR nung siya Pangulo at pagkatapos ng pagiging Pangulo niya, ay napakatalas na mga actually mga babae. Oh, yung tayong mga babae. <laughs> mga babae. Ang galing nila sa policy. Naintindihan nila pag sinabi Philippines 2000 ang pinag-uusapan policy. Ano itong policy? Ano ang pinag- uh, if you could look at it, uh, take take a look at everything. Mm-hmm. Lahat 'yan ay reference sa Maganda. Ku- Maganda, ku- Maganda ku- nga ma'am eh, <laughs> yung pagtinignan mo yung mga ito nga, ito yung gusto ko ipakita. May mga footnotes Parang, ah, ta- parang history research talaga siya na napaka-ayos. Hindi, hindi kasi talaga ito na ipagtagni-tagni. Not for, not for interpretation, but simply where the data is. Yeah. Di ba? Pag sinabing ano ba ito, ito, kita nyo, may picture dito ng ni Erap, may picture dito ni Jody V. Uh, makikita nyo ang mga tao dito, di ba? Uh, pero ano yan? A- anong ibig sabihin yan in terms of policy? Hindi naman picture lang yan. Correct. Doon yung mababasa mo dyan na Oo. si Eva pala yung PACC niya noon. That's, at siya ang nag, uh, nag uh, atas ng uh, ganong trabaho kay right. Peter Estrada. Saka mga batiin ko lang ha, yung ating mga belyas no, ni President Ramos. No, Celeste Di Makulangan, Stella Kapimpuyan, Kate Fernandez, Arlene Huelie. Yeah. Na... At si Dina Hota. Ah, yeah, ma'am. Yes, tama, tama. Naging kasama din natin si Christine Quintin Pastrana who is not a woman, a man. A man. <laughs> guapo, guapo. Guapo, guapo. At saka, teka muna ha, baka nakakalimutan ko yung ibang man. Uh, naalala ko lang yung mga woman. 
Pasensya na po niyo. Yung mga tao sa RP Dev. Uh, yung mga tao sa RP Dev. Yes, oh, oh madami. Ayan, si ano, halimbawa, um, yung isang naaalala ko ay si uh, Glenn De La Cruz, nandyan, oh, lagi. Si, si oh, uh, Just Valor Masigan and the other people, no? Thank you. Sila yung nakuha kong pangalan. But, Pero uh, again, ang, ang naging close in ko, si, sila, ano, si Gina Hota, si Stella, at si Celeste. Uh, si Stella yeah. at saka si, uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Um, Celeste Kate Kate si Kate, Kate. Oh. Na, Kate ano, I'm so sorry Kate um, oh. you didn't forget your name nakakantuwa kasi ano nakakatuwa lang kasi pagkausap mo talaga sila sabi ko pag tayo na kayo ng think tank yung RP Dev eh, i-transform yun na as a think tank ano dahil let me, ano, let me repeat it is because I do some amount of policy work myself uh, as you know I I am also part of Brain Trust Incorporated hmm. So we do policy research. And I, uh, from that perspective, I would really like to say the amount of policy information these women have in their heads is, is, is stunning. Alam nyo, kung gusto nyo gumanda ang bayan natin na magkonsulta kayo sa kanila. <laughs> and, they, and, and they will invite ako, in, ano, in-invite nila ako na they always meet on Saturdays at the, RP, the old RP Dev. Ano, kausapin nyo sila doon if you need ideas, no? Of course, uh, very welcoming and uh, talk about experiences of FVR, napakagaling. Um, Lalo-lalo na kung na-pick kayo ng interest ng ating website. So, the other thing that we have to say about them, hmm. um, yeah, I think you have, like for example, the MTPDP of 19-something. Ano laman noon? Anong ibig sabihin noon? Uh, these are just terms that people will forget in the next five years, right? Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't know where to find them, because you can find them in different parts of of the so-called the dispersed annals of the Philippines, mm -hmm. but you find them in NEDA, you find them in Philippine Statistics Office, and this is the work of policy analysts. Of course, we all policy analysts go into all of these um, databases, mm -hmm. but to piece it together for an entire presidency is is uh, pretty stunning job and and we want ito ito yung emphasis ko no may there have, there have been books that has written, that were written about president ramos yung kay thompson yung kay a lot of things ben cal daming sinulat but again if i'm a casual filipino na wala ang access sa mga librong ito a lot of them out of print no uh, when i need information aside from wikipedia no na credible nandiyan and short short no short as as much as short but everything substantial is there you have that website of the presidential FBR presidential library na talagang makakatulong sa inyo and my favorite part mama sobra sobra yung kanya mga old pictures as a soldier no uh, na hindi natin nakikita yon sa mga libro because we always we have seen FBR as president Yeah. Diba? Pero yung mga lumang pictures niya going around the provinces when he was uh, PC mm -hmm. command, uh, PC uh, end That's of right. the uh, Philippine Constabulary That's ay right. priceless. Diba? Well, as historical uh, items, uh, as historical objects, they are obviously priceless. Um, about photographs. You're, you're, you're making a point about photographs. Ano? So ito yung ano do, do sa ating website uh, there are many photographs um uh, especially ito state visits I think madadagdagan pa ito madadagdagan oh, tuloy-tuloy no? lang yan Yeah kasi ang dami talaga nung data napakadami no? napakarami oh. nabanggit ko yata no na ano over a hundred filing cabinets Oh um, no? absolutely yes Grabe no so madali lang pong ano and then you can download this you can use it in projects no pero isang magandang ano no yung project na limbawa sa school when you when you want to uh, what you call this of course you have to put that it, it came from FBR legacy but uh, you can use it in your projects in your reporting ang ganda ng mga pictures these are I haven't seen this before oh That's look right. at that no? incredible isn't it yeah. incredible incredible tapos may mga ito may mga caption to help you no oh. kung ano ba yung context niyan pero ito yung importante na ano no na magamit natin yung yung oral history project o oh, na no? matagal na binuno yan ng RPDEL ma, ma, madaming taon yan na ginawa 
na ni-record nila ang mga taong nakakaalam tungkol dito sa panahon na ito. So makikita niya marami sa kanila ay nagsilbi sa kabinete ni FDR. Pero makikita din ninyo na buong-buo naman ang loob nila kung anong ginagawa nila noon. Correct. Ang, ang maganda kasi dito, so you have the whole interviews, no? may 37 minutes, may one and a half hour, it's, it's full. No, ang ganda kasi dito da- dahil ganito, when in the future there would be a uh kasi ito yung nangyayari, no? I've been consultant also of some of the programs, especially yung tungkol sa mga presidente ng Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Ang pinakamahirap talaga kumuha ng di, ng mga footage, no? At yung mga taong nakasama, na lalo na kung matagal na kuno, saan ka pupulot ng nakasama ni Emilio Aguinaldo, di ba? O ni Manuel Quezon, di ba? Na i-interviewin mo at kakaunting footage siyang meron noon. But here, pagka gumawa ka ng reporting or even a documentary on President Ramos, no? uh, you can ask RPDEM for permission, di ba? And maybe you can use this uh, material, put them together, di ba? Uh, because it's it's being offered by the library That's for the right. public, ano, public interest. Yeah. Sobrang ano no, sobrang the openness of it, the 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 ang ganda, it's, it's a great service, no? So well, uh, mm-hmm. this is uh, the reason why I did it. It's mm-hmm. because uh government government and governance in our country uh really in my belief has to up the game in terms of professionalism. Right, right. And that includes the keeping and the construction of archives. And uh, the clarity with which archives are made. Uh, archives are made not because you want to skew history, mm. uh, whether you mean to or not. A- and that's, again, part of the reason why it needed to be curated. Right. And I'm very grateful to RPDEV and to the entire project team that they chose to, to engage a curator because my work is actually the work of uh, making sure that it remains a, a resource that is uh, that the future can use. Right. Instead of the future having to clean it up. That's true. The and future, re- and uh, no, no, distort. Huh? Distort. Diba? Well, um, the future, we, we don't know what happens in the future. Right. But all creators of archives uh, will will be very careful that it is an archive, that it is not a repository of um, uh, ideological uh, frames, for example. Right. Because if it is ideological, and we have said so, I mean, this is how FDR thought about the world. He was a product of the Cold War. Yes. Maliwanag yun, di ba? Mm-hmm. Hindi naman natin sinasabing wala siyang ideolohiya. Meron siya. Mm-hmm. At ito ang dahilan. Ito, hindi natin yung atahas ang sinasabi pero naging sundalo siya sa Vietnam. Oh, yeah. Naging sundalo siya sa Korea. Oh, yeah. Nag-aral siya sa Amerika. Uh, so, paliwanag kung saan ang takbo ng kanyang pag-iisip, di ba? Mm-hmm. Hindi natin kaila sa lahat. Uh, pero makikita din natin na napaka-lalim ng puso niya sa ordinaryong sundalo dahil sundalo siya yan. Uh, at napakalalim ng kanyang pagtingin and this is very important nung makita ko I did not come into the project knowing this yung kanyang consistency sa people power yeah very yeah. consistent hindi ko inasahan hindi ko inakala at, From, at yung, yung people and, power not just as a political tool but as a form of empowerment in all aspects exactly uh, as, as a form of governance right as uh, I, I, yun nga ang ating uh, tinutuloy-tuloy pa ngayon hanggat maaari. Consensus diba? building, all of Consensus that, ano, consultation. Building, consultation. Lahat yan ay may record. Dahil mm-hmm. yung policy at yung policy ay nakasulat. At yung nakasulat na yun ay isinagawa. And, and the Cold War warrior who talked to the communists that's correct. Sincerely, and even the left now is saying he's one of the most sincere, if not the most sincere president who talked to us. Well, uh, wala na tayo dyan, Shao. Yeah, of course. Ay, wala na ako dyan. Yan ay para sa mga historian sa pagdating ng panahon. Diba? Sila ang maghuhusga, sila ang magsusulat. Diba? Hindi, ang archive ay hindi para 
ang archive ang susulat ng kwento. Right. Ang archive, ulit-ulit ako dito sa point na ito because I think the value of, of this effort is precisely to allow to allow for interpretation. But having said that, uh, I, I would like to personally say that I was really quite uh, surprised that the commitment to people power was for real. Wow. Pwede natin sabihin o oh, ihusga pagdating ng panahon, nagsucceed ba siya o oh, hindi. Hindi natin alam ang sagot dyan. Diba? Yeah. Pero kung ginusto niya, yes. Nilagay niya sa policy, yes. yes. Nag, nagkaroon ba ng measures kung natutupad o hindi natutupad, yes. Right. Uh, nagalit ba siya kung hindi natutupad, yes. Um, it was quite consistent and quite clear where he wanted to go. Uh, so in a sense, this Cold War soldier became um, really quite an avatar of uh, people empowerment. Uh, and definitely a statesman. This is not an interpretation, a statesman. No, <laughs> no diba? not an interpretation. Uh, right. Because uh, the policy documents are available. Right. And the right. measures are available. Uh, these are not statements of, uh, of uh, machinery, diba? right? Of uh, public relations machineries. So, to close the interview, ano, kasi you have to go. Uh, yeah. You have a meeting. But uh, ito lang, mama. No? Um, I think I want to have a short perspective of how you, how you knew him and uh, how 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 he uh, how he dealt with the, you know you as part of his team before and siguro po ma'am uh, ano yung implication niyan sa ating mga kababayan yung mga natutuhan niyo sa kanya o yung naging kamanasan niyo sa kanya na maaari nating iwan sa ating mga kababayan and in many ways something that you also I think of course definitely as a curator imprinted in the website of the FBM Legacy. Medyo tatlo yata yung tinanong mo na yun. <laughs> sa, sa una, ay wala akong, hindi ko siya kilala. Mm-hmm. President. Uh, nakilala ko lamang siya dahil sa pag-ikot-ikot ko sa Mindanao noong 1970s pa. Siyempre, alam mo yung pangalan. Yun lang. Uh, nagkaroon lamang kami ng parang uh, pagtatagpo. Kumbaga, pero hindi personal na pagtapad ko noong centennial. Mm. Ah, yung centennial, uh, yung sampung taon at uh, yung pagpapapara sa centennial events, nagkaroon ng plano siya na napakalaki. Mababasa ito sa website. Yes. Uh, Kumbo ang uh, pagpapaliwanag ko ang nangyari sa preparasyon no? nitong ating uh, centennial. At noon ay nagtawag ng mga curators. Uh, sa kagandahang palad naman ay uh, unang-una, uh, ako lamang ang may korporasyon na curatorial ng panahon na yon. So ang naiata sa akin ay uh, the premier shrine, the result shrine in, in, in Promoters and the result shrine in Dapitan. So yun ang na, naibigay sa akin na project. Pero ito mga open public bidding ito. No? Uh, siguro kaya lang ang lamado dahil corporate na ako at that time. Uh, all right. That's when I got to know something about the man. Mm. And that's how I found out na serious siya sa centennial. Uh, <laughs> very, very serious. Which is very rare for a leader of the Philippines to be serious about history and culture. Right? That's correct. Uh, and the amount of resources that he put into the Centennial Freedom Trail was considerable. I I don't think it should be forgotten. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of the shrines and museums that were made during the centennial year should be forgotten. Uh, because I like your design of of Rizal Shrine. I I still prefer it. <laughs> well, it's no longer there. I know. <laughs> well, because um, the brief naman to me from the Ramos administration was S shrine number one and number two a sec. Pillar shrine, meaning to say, magalang na lugar, hindi yung yeah. parang hindi parang Disneyland. Right. Dahil sa pagdalang, makikita mo naman ang mga secular shrine sa buong mundo, halos wala naman. MP. And Lincoln Memorial, yeah. Wala, wala ng mga kung ano ano, di ba? Parang dapat ay isang lugar kung saan ito ay uh, makakaramdam ng galang. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, well, subsequently, hindi na ganun ang ginusto ng uh, mga susunod na administrasyon. Pero once upon a time, 
nakapagawa tayo na napakaganda. Uh, to, to my mind, it was a, uh, a rather uh, moving experience for me uh, as a curator. Maganda, maganda ang aking karanasan dyan. Uh, I, I could talk and talk about it, but uh, that was my real uh, Ramos experience from a distance. Okay, yun naman pat, pangatlo mong tanong uh, about ano ang natulog ko dito moving forward. Balikan natin yung people empowerment at saka consensus building. Kultura kasi yan. Uh, yeah. Yan ay hindi nangyari lamang noong 1986 people power. Uh, we built we yes. built towards that. Diba? Remember ang ating civil society, ang ating left, uh, even some on the right were really moving in the direction of uh, looking at uh, a democracy that uh, relies on empowered participation in governance. Yes. Mahaba natin ginawa ito bilang isang lipunan. Mahaba natin ginawa itong, um, itong ating constitution na 1987. Hindi naman right. yan constitution. Oh. Yan naman ginawa ng mga taong tulad ni Lino Broca, ni Cecilia Munoz Palma, ni na Adolfo Ascuna, iba-ibang klaseng tao, di ba? Uh, and ratified by 73% of those who voted. <laughs> right. And the, and the referendum was 90 plus percent ang, uh, ang turnout. Punta, no? so, uh, so, that constitution, which he took to heart, uh, it is a constitution that was not made in 1987, 86-87. It was made by decades of moving in the direction of people empowerment. And lessons of history. Correct. Yeah. So it was a huge cultural um, shaping of Filipino democracy. Up to now, tayo pa din tinatawag na Vatican ng mga NGO, di ba? Hanggang ngayon. Kasi naging kultura natin yun, di ba? Na Kung hindi kayang gampanan ng pamahalaan, gagampanan ng taong bayan. Alam natin yan. Hanggang yeah. ngayon, ginagawa natin yan. Yes. Uh, and and that we, we really have a powerful uh, voice, a set of voices from below. Na, nadudurog din yan, na, nalilito din yan, pero hindi naman niya nawawala ang tingin ko. And Ramos did, did a lot to make that institutional. And and that is enough of a legacy for me, for one president. Sabihin right. natin, uh, madami siyang ginawa. Uh, may, may, uh, may uh, katulad ni Mr. Do Ocampo na ginagalang po ang opinion. Sa kanya, napakalaki yung economic empowerment, uh, which I agree. The economic agenda of the Ramos administration was really quite strong and necessary because we were looking Tayo nun eh, nung pumasok siya, di ba? Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that uh, to the entire presidency to me is connected to the fact that hindi lamang bibig ang people power kasi nakadikit sa economic empowerment. So yun lang. Uh, I, I... Um... Institutionalize all people power. Um, and I think uh, that you connect that you know people empowerment, and I think the website uh, is also uh, a uh, a reflection of that. Uh, the website actually in, uh, encapsulates that people empowerment that people are able to judge the Ramos presidency, you no, know, based on the documents. It empowers them to do their own reading and judge by themselves, and it's it's really an empowering experience. Pam Marian. Thank you very much. And dami ko na namang natutuhan. And uh, it's good. So, I just talked to you diba, many times noon. But now we have shared this a conversation to our mga kababayan teachers and students of history. Thank you very much, ma'am. At mabuhay po kayo. So, ayun mga kaibigan. Ano, ang ating uh, interview with uh, Dr. Marian Pastoroses. Uh, um, uh, on the FBR Legacy website. Kaya natin to, mga kaibigan. Kaya natin to. Okay? So, siguro, bago ko sabihin ng aking parting shots, titignan natin kung may mga katanungan tayo. Uh, again, 
Uh, salamat po kay Wilfredo Ramos de Guzman, istoryang nakamumulat ng tulog na ulirat. No? Ayan, mabuhay. Hindi po, hindi, hindi yung maano yung ano, palakpak. Ano? Oo, lang hindi yata Logitech. Ayan natin. Yun. Anyway, mukhang uh, may problema tayo sa ating uh, sistema ng pagpalakpak. Pero salamat pa rin po, Maureen Aguilar, no? sa Mission Rich, Richard Godino. Tanong ko lang po, ano yung nagustuhan nyo sa panukalan ni Ramos para sa edukasyon? Alam mo, naalala ko sa panuka. Hindi ko alam ha, yung, yung deeper, ano, no? pero hindi masyado maligalig yung curriculum noon. Noong panahon ni Ramos, hindi masyado maligalig yung curriculum. Oh. So, okay naman, no? Civic at kultura noon, ang naalala ko. Malakas yung emphasis sa pagtuturo ng mga kabayani, no? Uh, ng ating bayan. So, yeah, I guess. I guess okay ako doon, ano? But I don't know kung yan ay work na ng DepEd even before that. Kasi hindi, parang hindi masyadong magulo. Hindi masyadong nagpalit-palit ng curriculum nung panahon na yun. Oh. Alright, sige. Kung wala na po tayong katanungan, no? muli maraming salamat po sa inyong panunod ngayong araw na ito. I'd like to thank Ma'am Celeste Di Makulangan of the RPDEB, uh, Ramos Peace and Development uh, Foundation no? uh, for, ano, no? uh, for facilitating ang mga guests natin, ma-invite dito. And hopefully, sa mga susunod na panahon po, ay magkaroon pa tayo ng, mas, uh, ng iba pang mga topics No, again, babati na siguro natin mga regulars natin, no. Si Sir um Euphemia Agbayani, Yufi Agbayani, hello po, Jessie Kaling, hello, no, at marami pang iba na baka hindi natin nabati dahil hindi gagana ang ating mga ang uh, ano, no, yung ating mga pagbati dito, no. Uh, why? Tingnan natin bago tayo umalis, no. It's 9:06, overtime po tayo, no. Uh, pero baka pwede naman na tayo ay uh, makapag uh, ano dito no makapag uh, uh, kung may mga na bumati pa kasi last time ang daming humabol na pagbati no na hindi natin alam na nandun pala sa website but anyway sige okay na siguro yon ayan okay na siguro yon ganito na lang uh, ang gawin natin eh, tapusin na natin ano para naman makapahinga na yung ating bagong bagong at uh, talaga namang napaka team din nating uh, kaibigan dito no uh, na si uh, ilang makuha ko nang tama si Myra ayan si Myra syempre no o, sige so ito no siguro bilang panghuli gusto ko po sanang Sabihin sa inyo, uh, yung the FBR legacy website, gamitin natin ng mahina. No? Bakit? Ngayon pong panahon na ito, man, mayroon tayong mga crisis. Mayroon tayong power crisis, may food crisis. No? Uh, ang pinapakita sa atin ng FBR website ay huwag tayong mawawala ng pag-asa. Merong kasaysayan na pwede nating paghanguan ng aral. Paano ba natin pwedeng isolve ang mga bagay na ito? At kung anong modification dahil bawat panahon ay may paraan ng pagsosolve. Na. Pero kailangan nating maintindihan ng nakaraan upang masolve natin ang mga problema ng kasalukuyan. Oh? Ah, uh, alam natin na na ano no, kabit-kabit ang salaysay na ito, no? May mga epekto rin ang ginawa nung una ng mga una-una natin presidente sa nangyayari ngayon. No, kailangan makita natin 'yan sa isang paraan na nakikita natin ang daloy ng mga pangyayari upang maintindihan natin kung saan tayo nagkamali. Doon tayo tunay na magkakaroon ng mga solusyon sa ating mga problema. Kaya importante po ang mga presidential websites kasi kahit ano pong impormasyon ang meron ang bawat isang Pilipino ang bawat isang estudyante, ang bawat isang guro, na may paliwanag ang mga salasalabat na mga bagay na ito ng malinaw ay isang hakbang tungo sa mas maginhawa at masayang bukas. No? Kaya muli, no? nagpapasalamat po ako. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. No? Ako po ulit si Xiao Chua na nagsasabi at nagpapaliwanag. No? 
lagi po nating tatandaan, ang kasaysayan po ay dapat po ay laging kay saya. Bye-bye! Sa puso't isip, laging kukupkupin Mga gunitang sa ating nakarating Bayan po kawin sa diwat damdamin Pangarap ng kahapon ating tuparin Mabubuting bagay sisikaping sa liksikin mga aral ng kahapon susulatin Malayong kahapon sisikapin pang libutin Nalalaman ating pang payayabungin Salam sa kaibig-ibig mong layunin Padayon sa iyong pagiging tinig nang kahapong nagnanais na marinig Nang ngayon at nang bukas na darating Luwit ka mananalaysay sa iyong papel Turuan mga kababayan na daigin Agam-agam sa sarili Dangal pa pag-alabin Gabayan, bayan Na kabutihan Landasin Mula si Tangkay hanggang mabulis Hilig sa nakaraang payabungin At kung marating anumang lupain May pagtatanggol sarili ng may lalim Salam sa kaibig-ibig mong layunin Padayon sa iyong pagiging nang kahapon nagnanais na marinig Nang ngayon at nang bukas na darating Luwit ka mananalaysay sa iyong papel Turuan mga kababayan na daigin Agam-agam sa sarili Dangal pa pag-alabin Gabayan, bayan Na kabutihan Landasin Mabuhay ka Mabuhay ka Kapisan ang Kasaysayan Ng Pilipinas